Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. So you may or may not know, a few weeks ago or maybe even a few months ago now, I actually did a video on my top easy rare house plants and it went down a treat. But today I would like to basically attempt to give you the opposite of that. So, you know, I know we all see things on Instagram, these really, really nice plants and people are saying like, oh, it's a bit of a diva, it's fussy, it's a nightmare and it's like, is it really? Could I handle it? How much is it? Is it worth me getting? Is it truly a nightmare and should I maybe just appreciate it from afar? Or do I want to maybe try and tame the beast? Well, in this video, I aim to maybe at least try and answer that to give you my top 10 most difficult slash anxiety inducing houseplants. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So I'm going to do these plants in order, in ascending order of how difficult they are. And I've rated them out of 10 instead of out of five last time. And this is just so I can kind of scale the numbers a little bit more easily than going with the decimal points, because let's be honest, who cares about the maths? And I have broken my rating down into six different categories. Category number one is risk of the crisp. This means basically how easy is it to roll up a nice dried up leaf and dip it into a salsa dip of your choice to serve with your favorite rom-com. Obviously, this probably translates to, of course, high humidity requirements, if you'd rather think of it that way. The second category, which is pretty self-explanatory, is the risk of rot. Now, usually the risk of rot is sometimes linked to, obviously, their humidity requirements, because the more humidity requirements, probably the more chance of rot you're going to get. The next category is irreplaceability, which basically means how easy is it to get another one should you fail in your quest to look after one of these plants. Now, this does not mean rarity, because rarity and irreplaceability are very, very different things. It's like saying rarity and being in demand are very, very different things. The next category I'm measuring is the slowness of growth. Now you might think, well, why is that important? Well, it might actually factor into your purchase. You might be thinking, okay, I'm going to buy this plant as an investment and I'm going to grow and propagate it. So really you may or may not want to know how quickly it grows. So you know, you know, the feasibility of how well you can propagate and sell or give to your friends or do whatever you want to do with this plant. Maybe you just want to divide it up for insurance purposes, which is absolutely fine. But if it's a slow grower, you may be waiting a little bit longer than perhaps you intended. The next one is obviously pretty obvious and that is the price. So how expensive on average is this plant? And the last category I thought I would add because honestly, I don't know if people talk about this, but I actually think it's extremely relevant. And the last category is therefore the anxiety factor. So how much sleep probably are you going to lose over this plant and over the plant's well-being? This is not always linked to price. It is usually linked to rarity, or it could just be linked to the plant's difficulty in its care. But honestly, some of the plants on this list really aren't messing about. So, you know, some of these very, very anxiety inducing plants, I can speak from personal experience. But anyway, let's just get right into it. I'm going to start with the least, you know, difficult plant going all the way up to the most difficult plant. So let's go. And I do have my phone for my ratings because there is no way in hell I'm going to remember all these numbers. So. So first up, we have the Anthurium rugulosum. Now, I did have this in my care for a little while under the shop. And let me tell you, <laughs> it wasn't the most easiest thing to care for. Risk of the crisp being that it is corrugated, because I have found this with corrugated plants, it is quite high risk of crisping up and being very, very prone to, you know, suffering in low dips of humidity. Similarly, risk of rot is almost quite as high because you have to really crank that humidity up in order to keep the plant okay. Therefore, obviously there is a risk of too much moisture and your plant rotting. So not very good at all. Irreplaceability, I give this plant about a two. You can get hold of it. No one's really selling it, don't get me wrong, but that does not mean necessarily that it is rare in any way. So you could replace this should something go wrong. It's not too difficult at all, to be honest. Slowness of growth, it's honestly not that slow at all. Once you've cracked the conditions, it will grow pretty, pretty quickly. So you shouldn't have a problem with that at all, really. Price, again, pretty reasonable. You know, not many people, like I've said, are selling it, but that does not mean it's expensive. That does not mean it's in high demand. If anything, it's not in demand. So really, if you want to find one, you probably shouldn't have too many issues, I wouldn't think. This obviously means I give the plant an anxiety factor of about two out of 10 because I can't see anybody losing too much sleep beyond maybe fearing, you know, risk of the crisp because I think that's the only realistic fear that you may have with this plant. Beautiful, beautiful plant, don't get me wrong, but I find that the 
corrugated, you know, ness aspect of it does make it a little bit difficult to care for, shall we say. Next on the list, we have the Queen Anthurium. And by that, I mean the green form and not the dark form, because let me tell you something about the dark form. The dark form is actually much, much hardier and much easier to look after, in my experience, than the green form. Risk of the Crisp, again, a good solid six, because honestly, I think the first time I got my Anthurium, I think I placed it into about 65% humidity and it just curled up like a Dorito. So not very, very good at all. You're better off keeping these in either a terrarium or some sort of cloche or something to keep the humidity up, because I do find that these are really, really sensitive. Similarly, of course, the risk of rot is super, super high because you're more likely to baby this plant under a cloche in a terrarium, beside a humidifier, anything. So your risk of rot is definitely up there as well. Irreplaceability, I only give it about a three out of 10 because honestly, there are so many sellers selling these things. It's not too difficult to come by. I know a lot of you might think it's rare. It's really not. It's, it's in high demand, sure, but I know a lot of people that are stocking this plant at the minute, myself included. So you should be able to pick this up if you need to. You should be able to find it in most places on the internet. Slowness of growth, I give this plant a four out of 10. It's not too bad. Again, if you nail the conditions and you get them right, the plant will grow. If you do not, the plant will simply just survive. It won't thrive. It will just survive. So you won't get great growth. So really it's dependent on how you treat it. The price out of 10, I would honestly give it about a three. You know, you can find them. Yes, they're in treble digits, but in comparison to some of the other plants on this list, they are definitely more on the cheap end and definitely more on the replaceable end. So not too bad on price if you're looking to invest in one of these. I would therefore give this plant an anxiety factor of three because I don't think it's going to keep you awake at night. It really depends obviously on your own personal feelings on this plant, but again, in comparison to a lot of the other plants on this list. I think you know where I'm going with this. It's it's honestly, it's, it's not too bad. Just keep that humidity up. You're probably okay. Next up, I have the Anthurium Doriaki. Now, I'm not sure what hybrid this is. I had one of these at one point. I think it's a hybrid of, it's Crystallinum and something else. I'm not actually sure. If you know what it is, feel free to leave it in the comments below. But yeah, I had one of these. I tried putting it in the biob. I tried putting it pretty much everywhere and it just would not grow. I could not nail the conditions. Eventually, after about six months, it just it just gave up and died. So I would say that this one is a little bit more difficult than others, certainly. Risk of the crisp, I give that about four out of 10 because honestly, the leaves are much thicker. It's not too much of a problem in my experience anyway. I never suffered from anything like that and I was generally keeping it in about 65% humidity, which is honestly quite low for, you know, like a bougie anthurium. So I wouldn't say there was too much risk of that. Risk of rot, a good seven, because in my experience, the roots aren't fantastic on them and they are very, very, very prone to rot. I just could not get these roots to just stay good no matter what I did. Risk of rot, I would say, is a good solid seven. There is high risk of rot, to be honest, with a lot of major, you know, bougie anthuriums. There tends to be a lot of risk of rot anyway. Irreplaceability on this one, I'm giving this a little bit of a higher score because honestly, because it is a hybrid, not everybody is selling them. So they are a little bit more difficult to get a hold of, you know, should you fail in your quest of looking after one. It's not that you won't find another one, it's just you might have to kind of do your digging and look around to get another one. Slowness of growth, I give this one a seven. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's a hybrid or because it's kind of dwarfed almost but they don't grow very fast at all. So I'm scoring that pretty, pretty bad on the slowness of growth rate. For price, I rate it about a two out of 10. I wouldn't say it was particularly expensive. I don't think you should be paying into treble digits for this plant at all. I think you'll get it for the late double digits, maybe 80, $80, 80 pounds, something like that. I don't think it's, you know, like a top tier anthurium or anything of the sort. So I don't think you'll have too many problems. Again, it's not super sought after, therefore the price isn't super high. For the the anxiety factor, I give this plant a three. Again, you're not going to lose much sleep. It's reasonably tough. It just doesn't like to grow is basically what I found with this plant. Don't rot the roots, leave it alone, try and keep it warm. It might grow or it'll grow really slowly. Generally speaking, you're not going to lose too much sleep over this plant. Oh, okay. <laughs> the next plant I have on my list is none other than the Philodendron Lin Hanonii. I think that is how you say it. Oh my God. Gosh, I ordered, I think I ordered a couple of these into my shop a while back when I was still shipping to the USA. I know a few of you actually bought these from me and I don't think any single plant survived 
shipping. They were just horrendous. They are also another corrugated plant, which leads me to honestly believe that corrugated plants just suffer from this kind of thing. But the risk of the crisp is strong with this one. I actually give this a 10 out of 10 for risk of the crisp. Stress it out in any way, you're pretty much screwed. So I wouldn't give that a very good score at all. Remember, a high score is a bad thing. So it's it's not good for the crisp. It's not, it's not good. Risk of rot, therefore, is going to be pretty high as well, because obviously you're going to try to bump the humidity up to solve the risk of the crisp problem. So I give the risk of rot a 9 out of 10. Irreplaceability, I give this plant a 2, because you can locate it on the internet. Again, not many people necessarily want it right now, probably because it is quite difficult to care for, but it is there nonetheless, should you, you know, screw up and you need another one. Slowness of growth, I'll give it about a 3, because again, if you nail the conditions, if you get the conditions right, it will be absolutely fine, because philodendrons generally can grow pretty quickly once you get, you know, once you give them what they want. So if you give it what it wants, it'll probably grow reasonably fast for you if you want to propagate it. Just good luck actually, you know, passing it on because it might die in the process. Price, again, I give it a 2 out of 10 because you can find it. It's not too expensive. You shouldn't have any problems there. Overall anxiety factor because, you know, you could get another one. The price isn't ridiculous. I give this, again, an overall anxiety factor of 3 out of 10. Next up on the list, I have another philodendron for you, and that is philodendron patriciae. This philodendron really irritates me. It's very, very difficult to keep happy, I find. Even though all my other philodendron in my shop seem to be fine, these guys take a little bit more work, to say the least. They are very, very, very fussy. Risk of the crisp with this plant, I actually give it a five, so it's reasonably low. It's not too bad. I guess you could say it's in the middle. I haven't really had any issues with this plant crisping up. You know, the leaves seem to keep really, really nice. Humidity doesn't seem to be a problem. This plant should be okay in about 65% humidity. No issues at all. Risk of rot, again, because you're not having to bump the humidity, the risk of rot is lower, generally speaking. I give that about a four out of 10. So you shouldn't be too worried about the risk of rot. For irreplaceability, I actually do give this plant a good 6 out of 10 and that is because it is very much in high demand. They aren't really that cheap so if you screw up with a patriciae you, you're not going to feel your best. I'm not going to lie about it man. Slowness of growth I actually do give this plant a 6 out of 10 so I do find it slower than a lot of other philodendrons that I have in the shop for sure actually. For the price of this plant I actually give this a 5 out of 10 so it's not super cheap. It's not super expensive. You should definitely be in the treble digits in paying for this plant. I would expect, in my opinion, that's certainly what I've experienced. So mm, it's not great, you know? Not the end of the world, but if you don't have, you know, more money to play with, that might be a bit of a problem. Please bear in mind, guys, that I'm not saying, you know, that paying treble digits for a plant is not super expensive. I'm saying compared to the general list here, it's not expensive, if you feel me. Of course, paying treble digits for a plant is expensive, do you know what I'm saying? But compared to the other plants on this list, honey, it's pocket change. Seriously. I give this plant an anxiety factor of about 4 out of 10. You're not going to lose too much sleep. It's not going to die on you overnight if you look at it wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? The price does make you feel a little bit funny, but generally it should be okay. Next on the list is the Philodendron UPI. Now I know it's spelled a little bit funny, but I'm pretty sure this is how you actually pronounce the name. So it's pronounced UPI. Risk of the crisp on this one is very, very low. I would say it's a reasonably tough Philodendron. So I'd actually give this a three out of 10. You're not gonna worry about this thing crisping up on you. I won't, I'm not gonna say, you know, don't worry at all, but it's highly unlikely that this thing is gonna get crispy on you without warning. Risk of rot, therefore, is not too much higher either because there is no risk of crisp, therefore, the risk of rot is probably also lower. So I gave this, why did I give this? I gave this a four out of 10. Again, not too much risk at all. You should be okay. Irreplaceability. Now then, <laughs> this plant is not very easy to replace. This plant is actually very, very rare. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea because it looks a little bit insane, but you can't really get this. You really need to know a guy if you want you know, to get your hands on one of these plants. You're probably not going to get your hands on one of these in the shop. And if you do, there's probably, you know, only one of them. So the irreplaceability on this is pretty high. Next up is the slowness of growth. I don't know what it is, but this plant doesn't seem to want to grow insanely fast. And now I don't know if other collectors would agree or disagree with me. I'm not really sure. But in my experience, I'm not finding much growth from this plant generally. The price on this plant, I will give this a six 
out of 10, which is getting higher. As I say, this plant is not common. You will not pick it up in, you know, a regular nursery or anything like that. You really have to know a collector and ask for this plant and see if they, you know, if the collector has any cuttings or anything to give you. But I reckon for a plant with two leaves, you may be looking at least $200 at least, to be honest. So it's not cheap, it's not a cheap plant. Therefore, I give this plant an overall anxiety factor of around eight out of 10 for the reasons that I've just mentioned. If you screw it up, good luck getting another one. You might be put on a waiting list for a little bit of time, if you can find a waiting list. <laughs> It's about time we had a Monstera on this list, isn't it? So next up, I have the variegated Adansonii. Now, I don't know what people are gonna expect me to say about this plant, but for a lot of reasons, this plant is pretty difficult. So I'll get right into it. Risk of the crisp on a variegated Adansonii is not very high at all. I would say it was the same as any other Monstera. You obviously gotta watch the areas where the variegation is, but generally speaking, it's the same as Adansonii. It's not gonna be much different. So the risk of crisp is obviously lower. Risk of rot, However, I actually find is higher than some other plants. Maybe because we, you know, we propagate it more, so we experience this more statistically. You know, if there's ever a plant that you're gonna cut and propagate and sell bits of, it's gonna be variegated Adansonii. So perhaps, you know, more people report rot on it than others for that reason. It's really hard to say. So I've put the risk of rot a little bit higher than risk of the crisp. Irreplaceability. Now I expect this number to go down over the next year because honestly, this plant is definitely starting to circulate the internet much, much more than what it was. But for now, I'm going to give this plant an irreplaceability rating of about seven out of 10. You can replace it. You can probably, probably find somebody that might be selling it, but you're gonna obviously have to pay quite a lot of money. Again, I don't like to throw out prices because everything is subjective, but maybe for two to three leaves of variegated Adansonii, maybe 800 pounds, $800, maybe a little bit more than that, really, obviously, prices at different times of the year fluctuates but definitely without a doubt I would say that you'd be paying into the late treble digits so approaching a thousand pounds a thousand dollars or whatever have you it's not great which I should have just mentioned in price but never mind so slowness of growth I actually give this a five out of ten it's really not too bad Obviously, it doesn't grow as quick as a regular Adansonii because it's variegated, therefore it has less chlorophyll, therefore it can't grow as quick, but it's okay. It's pretty average. It's just a little bit less than what you'd experience maybe with a regular Adansonii. Price, again, the same as the replaceability. I've already mentioned, I give this one a seven. It's going to cost you quite a lot of money. The anxiety factor on this plant, however, is a nine out of 10. And honestly, that's got a lot to do with the fact that not only is it on the rarer side, it is also in high demand because not every rare plant is in high demand and that is what you see on the internet when you see these huge price tags so if you if you have something that goes wrong with your variegated adansonii you are not going to be very happy so for those reasons i give this plant a nine out of ten on the anxiety scale because everybody probably knows you've got a variegated adansonii and you probably are losing a lot of sleep over this plant already so it's pretty pretty high on a nine out of ten next up on my list of the most difficult house plants is 100 percent the Anthurium Splendidum. Now, oh my gosh. I bought two of these plants in for my shop a long time ago. I will still have the pictures that I used for the shop and they are just impossible to care for. I tried everything. Again, it's another corrugated plant, which does definitely suggest to me the corrugated plants are 100% harder. And I think that's why they're appearing in this list. But honestly, this plant is just impossible to grow. It could be the most difficult plant I've ever tried to grow in my lifetime. It's impossible. It, I still have nightmares, I think, because they cost me a lot of money. Full disclosure, both of them died. I couldn't take care of them. That's it, gone. I did everything I could. So for the risk of the crisp, I actually give this plant a full house. I give it 10 out of 10. Similarly, for risk of rot, I also give this plant 10 out of 10 because can you tell that I'm still mentally scarred by trying to look after this plant? It is impossible. Irreplaceability, however, I do give this plant a six because you could replace it. But for me, it's more, why would I want to? I'm not ready for that. I couldn't do it the first twice that I own them. I'm not gonna be able to do it a third time. So although you could replace the plant, I don't know if you'd want to because it's so difficult to care for. You'd have to really know what you were doing, I think, if you wanted to replace this plant, if you bought it and you, know, you screwed up in some way. So please consider that if you wanna replace it. 
know your stuff, you know? Otherwise you could be throwing more money down the pan. Slowness of growth, I give this a six. It's reasonably slow to grow, probably because it's so hard to please. So you are probably gonna find that with this plant. Price of this plant, I give this plant a five out of 10. It's not too bad. You're gonna be paying into triple digits, but it's not gonna, you know, completely take away everything you want. It's not variegated Adansonii levels of triple digits. It's much lower. It's probably closer to a UPI in terms of price. So it's gonna cost you a lot of money and it's very difficult to care for. Do you get what I'm saying? Like if you want to take care of this plant, you want to buy this plant, if you're interested in this plant, please do your research. Speak to, speak to the grower and get as much information as you can because this plant does not mess around. Obviously, I give this plant therefore an anxiety factor of seven. Now, obviously, it will give you a lot of anxiety because it's not insanity levels of money. It You could replace it. So your anxiety factor is obviously going to go down a little bit to compensate for that. But it's still pretty high. Like it's, I think I'm still affected by it, to be honest. Now, before I do my last two plants, I'm just going to put some scores up on the screen because I'm very well aware I have not gone through all of these scores yet. So I probably, probably should. So we have two plants left on our list. But before I do that, I'm just going to run very, very quickly through these scores. So the easiest, most difficult anxiety inducing plant at the bottom of the table is the Anthurium rugulosum at about 3.3. So that's pretty low. That's not too bad. Quickly followed by the green queen anthurium, so the regular form, and that is sat at 4.3. Not long after that, we have anthurium doriaki, which is sat at 4.6, so getting a little bit more difficult. Then we have the wonderful, very difficult philodendron linhanonii sitting at 4.8. Quickly followed by the philodendron patricii coming in at a nice round of 5 out of 10, so I guess this is your middle mark in this case. Then we have the philodendron UPI sat at a six, so we're above average now. We're definitely climbing the difficulty scale. Followed again by a Monstera adansonii variegata or variegated adansonii coming in at 6.2 out of 10. To supersede that, of course, we have what we just mentioned, the Anthurium splendidum, which is sat at a whopping 7.3 out of 10. So you're probably thinking by now, what could be worse than all of that? So reaching in at number two on this list, I have the one, the only, the unicorn that is the Monstera Oblique. I'm just gonna jump straight into it. I know you guys know that I have one. If you don't know that I have one, you're watching this for the first time, I do have one. But I will just start off straight away with the Risk of the Crisp, which is actually a good eight out of 10, because if you don't know this already, a Monstera Oblique, a genuine one that is, likes to be sat above 90% humidity. It will thrive at 95. So even 90 could be improved upon. This thing needs growing in a vivarium. You don't wanna grow it in a house plant situation, it, it will not be happy, it will not love you, it probably won't even grow if I'm honest, it'll just crisp up or it just it won't do anything. Similarly, the risk of rot is also an eight because Monstera don't tend to take up as much water, so watering is probably not gonna lead to it as much, but the humidity definitely might contribute to your risk of rot. So for irreplaceability, I actually give this plant eight out of 10. Now it's not nine out of 10 because honestly, I think a few months ago when I first did my Oblique video, it probably would have been nine out of 10, but since then, a lot of collectors have come forth, you know, selling Oblique, so it's much more readily available now than what it was you know six months ago so you could find another one but you're gonna pay a lot of money <laughs> like mm. I mean most things you spend that much money on you should probably have a clutch in there so you can drive it slowness of growth is kind of linked to a lot of the plants I mentioned earlier in that if you nail the conditions of the plant if you get the conditions right it's gonna grow like wildfire I certainly found that but if you don't you're probably gonna get no growth at all. Or if you do get growth, it's not gonna be leaves, it's gonna be, you know, runners or stolons. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link my oblique video down below. So really it depends. So I'm giving it a five because it can go either way, depending on how you treat it. The price is the same rating that I gave for irreplaceability and basically, you're going to be paying maybe for a plan for like three leaves. You're looking at about 2,000 pounds, euros, dollars, whatever you want to call it. You're into kind of the serious collector category. The price is pretty serious. You know, if, if something happens to your obliquer and you're an obliquer owner, my condolences. I know that Mick Minemeyer very recently, I think he had an obliquer in his house or wherever it was. I don't know exactly what happened, but apparently the obliquer got knocked off a shelf by his uh, tortoise and his tortoise ate the obliquer as in the full thing. He lost it. Gone. Done. That's... wow. 
For all of these reasons combined, for the fact that this plant is considered a unicorn, you do need a terrarium or vivarium or whatever you're gonna use it in. It's not screwing around. It's got a pretty high anxiety rating of 10 out of 10. That gives it a total score of 7.8 on the difficulty slash anxiety slash whatever scale. That's pretty high to be honest. So you may or may not have worked out the number one spot on this list. Coming in at number one on my list is the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. So for this plant, the risk of the crisp is only a five out of 10. And I don't know if that surprises anybody or not, but Spiritus Sancti have leaves kind of, maybe I should say leathery, I don't know. It's not a typical leaf texture. They're much thicker and much hardier. So I don't find personally that they have insane humidity requirements. Obviously they'll, they'll welcome it, but you really don't need it. 65% will be just fine for them. Similarly, the risk of rot watering is probably not gonna lead to it as much. Make sure those roots are really, really aerated if you have one and just, you know, don't be too forthcoming with the watering. Irreplaceability has got to be a 10 out of 10. And I know it's higher than Monstera Oblica. And honestly, that is because the demand for Monstera Oblica was never there in the first place because it was a unicorn. People didn't know about the plant. Most people thought they had one, even though it was Adansonii, Sony Ice, so nobody really wanted it. However, with the Spirit of Sancti, it has never gone through that journey, if you know what I'm saying. There are very, very few available. If I wanted to buy one right now, I don't think I could. I don't think I can actually get my hands on another one, to be honest. I don't know how many there are in the EU. I would wager maybe two or three. I'm not sure at all. If anybody knows, then please let me know. I don't know how widespread this plant is. Moving on very quickly to slowness of growth. It is pretty slow. They get shocked very easily and it takes them a long time to recover, in which case, they will be stunted for a little bit you know a little bit longer so they don't grow super fast they grow like a philodendron but they seem to be affected much much more than a lot of other philodendron so i guess if that's something you want bear that in mind obviously the price on this plant as you may expect is a solid 10 out of 10 and this is probably due to the fact that i think was it last week or the week before i think it might have been last week there was a philodendron spiritus sancti that actually sold for six thousand dollars i think it was six thousand dollars so obviously being it's the most expensive plant on this list by far it has to get a 10 out of 10. all of these factors considered the fact that you probably are not going to be able to replace this plant it is insanely expensive they are not around so for the anxiety factor, I actually give this plant an 11 out of 10 because it's beyond ridiculous, which gives the plant an overall total score of eight out of 10. So it sits on the very, very top of the charts. Of course, any plant on this list is difficult. Any plant on this list is probably somewhat expensive, somewhat rare, somewhat sought after. I hope this gives you some information, even if it's just a little bit of fun on, you know, what these plants are actually like to keep. I think people on Instagram sometimes make this look very easy and it can be easy if you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing there is a lot a lot of risk involved so that was my video on the top 10 anxiety inducing rare difficult house plants if you have any other video requests for me please leave them in the description and i'm going to love you and leave you now have a great weekend guys and i will see you next week bye